Hi there, Johnny here. So in this video, I'm actually going to be talking about should you be getting the M1 or rather the 2020 M1 MacBook Air or should you be getting the latest MacBook Air with the M2 chip? Right, so firstly, let's get some of the facts straight. Um, the 2020 M1 MacBook Air, uh, an older computer with an older processor, the base model variant of like 8 GB of RAM with 256 GB of SSD internal storage can actually be found right now for as low as 750 US dollar via eBay or $849 via the Apple website's official refurbished section. Now, as for the newer M2 MacBook Air, the base model variant of 8 GB RAM with 256 GB SSD internal storage starts from $1,200 via the official Apple website. And when we look at things in this way, I'm not sure whether the small incremental improvements on the M2 MacBook Air is worth it since you can actually get the previous model at such a good price. And after two years with the M1 MacBook Air, from here on, I'll just be calling it M1 Air, I want to talk about why going with the 2020 M1 Air is still an excellent investment going into 2023 and why it might be a better choice than going for the newer one. So first off, let's talk about you know the webcam and the microphone quality. Now the webcam resolution, even though it's only 720p on paper, Yes, you heard that right, 720p. The thing is this is that even though it might seem technically lower resolution, but in real life usage, I've actually done countless you know, video conference calls with this machine. I'm actually pretty surprised that it actually offers like better color, better skin tone, and an overall brighter picture compared to many laptops which actually boost webcam with you know 1080p resolution. And one example is actually my Legion uh, gaming laptop from Lenovo, which actually boasts a 1080p. But what is more impressive is actually the built-in microphone on the M1 Air. Now, I use it not only for Zoom sessions and you know video conferencing, I also use the built-in microphones to record like voice memos, uh, WhatsApp audio, FaceTime, etc, etc, including f making phone calls. The microphone quality is really sweet. People on the other line, they can hear me loud and clear and some of them saying that, hey, it seems like you sound better compared to when you're talking on the phone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a mic test on the M1 MacBook Air built-in microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a mic test on the M1 MacBook Air built-in microphone but what's your thought? Those of you who actually have the M1 Air, let me know down in the comment section below what you think about the webcam and the microphone quality. So moving on to the next one, you know, would actually be the audio. Now, despite this machine being only like 13 inch, but I would have to say that the built-in speakers are just mind-blowing you know it has loud and large powerful output the volume which really puts personally a lot of premium laptops windows laptops to shame now firstly the the speaker grills are located on both sides of the laptop and they are actually firing at the users now this is actually very different from the M2 Air or the M2 MacBook Air whereby Apple actually moved the speaker grills to the back of the laptop whereby it's actually bouncing off the base of the screen. For me, I don't really like this. You know, I would prefer the audio to be firing directly at me instead of bouncing off.
This is personal preference. Those of you who have actually have the M2 Air and the M1 Air, do let me know down in the comment section below which type of speakers placement do you prefer. So the third area which I really like about M1 Air is actually the keyboard and the keyboard backlight. Now, firstly, the M1 Air actually comes with, they call it the Apple Magic Keyboard. And it comes with a dedicated power on off button on the top right hand corner which is also a built-in touch id typing experience is fantastic the key travel and the feedback is just awesome personally i was able to type comfortably for hours and hours especially if i need to do you know like productivity tasks The keyboard backlight is also fully functional, uh, whereby you can also manually adjust it via the control center, but you can always set it to auto adjust in the system preference. In my personal opinion, I feel that the typing experience on the M1 Air is probably only rivaled by Lenovo's ThinkPad. But what do you think about? Is there any other type of laptop keyboard which you think, no, Johnny, I feel that this particular keyboard is far better than you know m1 macbook air do let me know down in the comment section below next of course will actually be the touchpad this particular machine is paired with an enormous touchpad and it actually blends in seamlessly with the entire machine what can i say you know i mean this is probably the best or maybe one of the best so far i have zero complaints on the m1 air it comes with two thunderbolt ports on the left and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the right. Many people actually complained that two ports is simply not enough. And this was actually the case for me as well. In the first, I think like the first two or three weeks, I was very uncomfortable that there's only two ports. For me, I has been a long time Windows users, I'm actually very used to my laptops having a whole array of ports for me to utilize. So this is actually the very first time where I have only two ports. But subsequently, as the days goes on, I find that for the past two years, um, the two ports not really an issue for me because I could actually just can just hook up to a simple USB-C hub, which for me, I'm actually using it with a U-Green. It's a 10-in-1 USB-C hub. So it has been like my command center, you know, whether it's at home or if I'm traveling. And of course, the second port, I actually use it with my wireless keyboard and mouse, which I have it here, all right? Okay, which I use very, very often on almost a daily basis, except if I'm traveling. The M1 Air comes with a 13.3 inch Retina display, resolution of 2560 by 1600. Now this is a beautiful built-in screen. The images and the videos are beautiful. They are rich, they are sharp. I think the, the color accuracy of the panel right off the box is fantastic. If I remember correctly, it has like full sRGB coverage. It also has full DCI-P3 coverage. In terms of Adobe RGB, I think it's around like 88 85 or 90 percent do let me know you know if you if you have those specs like what is the adobe uh, rgb coverage for me personally i feel that this type of color accuracy you should be able to do you know simple edits of videos and photos but of course if you ever need to do serious real professional work you can always hook up one monitor one external monitor which is up to 6k now in terms of performance and battery life this is something i really really appreciate about this particular machine coming from being a windows user the performance in such in an ultra thin and fanless chassis and how it actually continues to deliver consistent performance even while on battery now this is what that really amazed me because this means that when you plug out the power cable on the M1 Air, there's no drop in screen brightness, no drop in performance, and you do not see the battery mode changing. Another thing I want to let you guys know if you didn't realize this, is that I've been using the M1 Air for the last two years. For my YouTube channels, I've thrown all the videos at it. I think, you know, 720p, 1080p, 4K, I've thrown at this M1 Air. It handled nicely. Besides that, I think it's comforting to know that the M1 Air, since its launch in 2020, 
it has had enough time in many, many people's hands and not just mine. So the thing is that if there are any major issue with this particular machine, it would have surfaced a long time ago and by now, the machine has gone through you know, multiple updates, there has been multiple security patches. So today, the M1 Air is definitely a much more reliable and stable machine compared to like two years ago. And I'm actually also confident to say that everything you've heard about the M1 Air when it comes to battery life performance is true. Now, for me, I usually make sure that my M1 Air is fully charged at the start of the day and when I start using it, usually the screen brightness, I'll set it at 50% uh, with like Wi-Fi on, with Bluetooth on and I'll have multiple apps running at the same time and I'll be editing a 1080p video in iMovie. And usually it'll last me about 8 hours before I need to reach for the power cable at 10%. And these are days I'm actually doing video editing. Now on days whereby I'm just doing you know basic productivity tasks, words, Excel, email, preparing my script, you know, researching content and watching YouTube videos, etc, etc. Um, it only loses around 40% of its battery life after a whole day. That's how impressive the battery life is on my M1 Air, which I've actually been using it for two years. And what is even more impressive is the amount of power it needs. It only relies on 30 watt of power. 30 watt. Yes, you heard that right. Not like 120, not like 160, not 240, just 30 watt of power and he has done all the videos you have seen in my YouTube channel. Coming from a Windows laptop user, this is simply, this was simply impossible when I was using a Windows laptop, all right? So in general, M1 Air's battery life performance is so good that it's never a concern to me. Now, in terms of design and form factor, now even though the M1 Air has a quote and unquote older design, older processor, older computer. You know, but that's just because the M2 is just launched earlier this year. You know, so it isn't ancient by any means for the M1 Air. Now, in fact, if you look at it from another angle, the the design of the M1 Air is still a very good true to MacBook Air design. Now, what do I mean? It still maintains that ultra thin, you know, ultra lightweight body, you know, that makes it one of the most compact and most portable laptops you can find in the market today. It still has that, you know, super premium unibody aluminum bill that lives up to the Apple's you know, QC. I mean, seriously, look at how thin this machine is. And it's just a marvel, you know, that Apple's actually packed an entire computer in such a slim package, especially one as capable as the M1 Air. All right, so at the end of the day, after what I've said about this machine, using it for two years, should you be getting the M1 Air or should we be getting the M2 Air? Now, if you look away from the mediocre webcam and the lack of more ports, I feel that these are actually minor flaws to otherwise an exceptional laptop, especially when you can get it for as low as 750. Now, I can't stress enough how good a value this is with all you're getting with the M1 MacBook Air, proven track record. So it's in terms of performance, battery life, etc. in one slick, slim, thin, portable package without any major compromises. Again, the M1 Air has actually handled all the tasks I threw at it incredibly well for the past two years. This is simply the best laptop you can get for under 800 bucks a day. You know, but hey, that's just me. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that the M1 Air at that price is a no-brainer or are there better options out there to go for? I'm curious to get your thoughts. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. So there you have it. This is actually my personal thoughts of the Apple M1 MacBook Air after using it for two years. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.